church have church again inside for the moment. But again, the Constitution says that the government cannot infringe upon the rights of religious freedom or re, uh, freedom of speech. That means a governor, that means a president, that means senator, means congressman, that means anybody in government cannot infringe or make a law or an ordinance to, to tell a church or worshipers that they cannot worship or go to church. But it seems today, might as well throw that constitution in the garbage can. And the worst thing about it is all the pastors and preachers and the church of God, most of them obey that order. And one day that's going to come back and bite them. Hopefully. But today we can have church inside, the government says. Like I care about what they say. I know that Ginsburg died, and we're going to put a conservative woman on the Supreme Court. What a wonderful day that is. To have justices who actually believe in what the Constitution says, not what they believe it says. That's what we have a problem with Christians. They never read the Word of God themselves, so they're making up what they believe it should say. And you need to read it yourself. Get in the Word of God, read it yourself. I know better to get on the internet and start talking to crazy uh, 20 to 30 year olds, sometimes even 35 year olds, because they have been brainwashed into believing what the Bible says and not what the Bible says. You cannot vote for a man who believes in abortion, who believes in the homosexual's marriage, the homosexual lifestyle is right. You cannot vote for a person is contrary to the Word of God. And say, oh, I love the Lord. I love Jesus. I love Jesus you're in love with, but it ain't the Lord God Almighty. Maybe that cute gardener named Jose or something. I don't know. But it ain't Jesus. I repeated myself over and over again to all these people who call themselves Christians. Get on your face and repent. Period. We have lost holiness and righteousness and shame in our churches now. You have to repent and get back to God. And one person said to me, who are you to judge another? And my response to them was, I don't judge no one. The Word of God judges you and tells you truth. Amen? I am the truth, the life, and the way. No man comes to follow the way but by me. Period. <laughs> there ain't a hundred roads to heaven. Amen. And there's literally thousands of roads to hell. But there's only one way to heaven. And Jesus narrows the way. And what do he say? Few there find it. But why is this a way of destruction? That's the easy way. Just follow the crowd. Well, if they believe it, I believe it too. Oh, really? Do a little research yourself. Get in the Spirit of God. Be led of the Spirit of God. Because the Bible says they are led of the Spirit of God out of the way. The sons of God. Years ago, I was driving on Highway uh, uh, Interstate 5 in, in Seattle, and this guy was driving, and he wasn't very much of a believer, I'm going to tell you that way. <laughs> he claimed to be, but he wasn't very much of a believer. And he was driving in the middle lane, and it's like a six-lane highway there in Seattle, and I told him, slow down, get in the right lane now. 
And look at the face. I'm telling you, slow down and get in the right lane now. Get to the right lane. Get in that lane. Get in that lane. As soon as you got in that last, next lane, the cars had a horrible accident. They were six, seven cars just going everywhere, going crazy. Banging each other, snapping. I mean, it was, it was a wreck. You, you wouldn't see it all done. But guess what happened? You go right straight through it. He looked at me and says, what in the world was that? And I told him, that is being led of the Spirit of God. If you listen to his voice and you obey him, he'll keep you out of crashes. He'll keep you out of destruction. He'll keep you uh, in a way that is life being blessed. Because if you would have stayed in that lane, you would have been right in the middle of that crash. Sometimes you have to be sensitive to God and hear his voice. Not just when you're praying all the time. But this morning, if you have your Bibles, in the book of Ephesians, the sixth chapter, Ephesians, the sixth chapter, we're going to be starting. You know, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to go back a little bit. In the sixth chapter, sixth verse, Oh, I'm going to go fifth, fifth first, because that, 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 in today's society, we need to read number six, or number five. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and tremble and singleness of your heart as unto Christ, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the service of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart, with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatsoever thing, good things any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. And he masters do the same thing toward them, forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven. Whether there is respect of persons with him. Woo! Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Woo! That's today. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your lines about with truth, and having the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all things, taking the shield of faith, where ye will be able to quench the, all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, God. Lord, that we did not become to the things of this world, but, Lord, we have overcome the things of this world through your power, through your mind. Bless your word. Bring it forth in Jesus' name. Amen. In the days of Paul, they had slavery. How many know that? How many know there's been slavery ever since the beginning of time almost? Amen. Ever since sin came into the world, men desired power over men. Cain and Abel. Cain wanted power over Abel. Saw that he pleased God and, and he didn't want that, so he killed him. We see all through his history time. And we have people in our streets now, I saw a paper that they want to they give reparations to all the black people whose ancestors were slaves. Which is insane and it's unconstitutional. Constitution is written in there, they can't do that. But these people don't care about right and wrong. They care about what they can get 
for free. My response to that was, my relatives on my mother's side fought the Civil War in the North and died. Where's their reparations? A amen? Where's theirs? If you want to be fair, where's theirs? Where are all the white people who died to set the, set the black man free? Where's their reparation? Oh, that's racist. No, it's not. If you think that's racist, you're racist. If you think it's fair, then let's be fair. The problem in our country today is we have walked away from God, His morals, His righteousness, and His understanding. They went out to do what they thought was right in the sight of God. It says, servants, be obedient to them that are your masters, according to the flesh, with, single, with fear and trembling and singleness in your heart under Christ. Let me tell you something. I worked for people I thought I was a slave. <laughs> you know, I worked for people who thought I was a slave. And it's not easy to be a Christian when you're working under a tyrant. I'll tell you right now, it ain't easy. But thank God, you know, he opens doors for me. And the next person that I worked for knew right off the bat that I was, there's something different with this guy. And he came to me and said, are you a Christian? Yes, I am. Oh, okay. I we like the rest of these guys. No, I'm not. And I went to work. I was always there early. I was always there 10 minutes early, waiting outside the door for the owner to open up. I went in there and I made the coffee. I went in there and I cleaned the toilets. I got everything ready. So when people, when we work, we start work. He noticed that. That I was faithful to all the things that I did. Because I didn't do it under men. I did it under the Lord. And this guy didn't give me five cent raises or ten cent raises. He gave me dollar raises. By the time three years, by the time in three years, I went to three years, I was receiving the top wage of, of the Germans. But he said one thing to me. Cat, do not tell anybody how much you make here. <laughs> I never did tell anybody how much I made there. Because that was between him and me. And I honored his word. Because he honored mine. And it says, not with eye service as men pleasers. Not doing it because you, you know, want to get ahead in life. But as servants of Christ. Doing the will of God from the heart. What is your heart telling you to do? How does your heart bring forth these things? And with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men. Amen? We do everything to the Lord. If men praise us, eh, it's all right. But I'd rather have praise of God than praise of men. I've been, into, I've been in big conferences where I've never seen a bunch of backslap in my life. You know, this one pastor, his church increased from 100 to 2,000. Oh, he must be a great pastor. Well, then you looked into it a little further because I was wondering, yeah, I don't know, there's something wrong with this story. I started looking into the story. What happened was the mega church down the street from his church, pastor fell into homosexual sin and destroyed that church. That, his church left. Guess what church they went to? His. Well, nothing he did is a result of sin. But boy, I tell you, I've never seen anybody praising this guy so much in my life. And he should be giving all the glory to Jesus. I would have got up there and said, hey, no, I didn't win it. It's not who I am, but if God brought these people to me and to be a shepherd, here I am humbly accepting that honor to serve them. That wasn't the attitude. It wasn't the attitude at all. Well, my theology must be right. Look at this. And his theology was not right whatsoever. I challenged him on it. I wouldn't reason why I'm not in a relation no more. Because <laughs> you know what? I don't care, you know, who you are or what you are. We all need to be humble before the Lord. And when people say, well, Pastor Dan, I can throw stones at you too. Go right ahead. I learned how to duck really well. Amen? 
and I'm forgiven. I guess I'm not with you. How many know it's one thing to be forgiven by God and another thing to be forgiven by men? God forgives you when she said, Lord, and she, deep as sea, gone, done. Don't mention it again. But you know how men and women, they like to mention that, throw it in your face all the time. And he that thou sin, you know, cast the first stone. You know what I'm saying? But the word abides. Amen. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my what? My word shall not pass away. And we walk, we talk, we move in his word. And Jesus says, they don't like the light. Why? Because it reveals their darkness. It reveals their sin, and they don't like it. So you know people start saying that they can throw stones at you means that they have some really nasty sin in their life. Go right ahead. How many know President Trump's not a perfect man? If he was, he'd be crying crucify him instead of impeach him. <laughs> He's not perfect. But thank God he can be forgiven. Amen? We walk in forgiveness. It goes on and says, and ye masters, you people, you people who own these slaves, you people who are in power, you people who have power over other people, do the same thing unto them. Forbearing, threatening. Now, don't be threatening them. God's going to get you for that. Remember that song back in the 70s, God's going to get you for that. <laughs> but when pastors get up on their pulpits and threaten their people, what in the world is that about? Who are you to threaten anyone? I went to one church and the pastor had me come and preach. And I preached on the Lord is my shepherd. You know, the 24 Psalms. And, and thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And as I was talking about sheep, when that sheep looked at that rod, he knew it wasn't for him. He took comfort man. that rod's not to be used on him. But that rod was meant for the lion, for the bear, for the wolf, for the predators. Amen? And he could trust that that shepherd with that rod would protect him. If he used the rod on the sheep, guess what happens? So the sheep have no trust in that shepherd. I had a friend who had a dog, and I went to that dog quickly. That dog bit down. He was afraid. Because Oh, he knows somebody comes to him that quick, he's going to get beaten. I told him, you beat this dog. This dog acts like you beat him. You go like that, he dog goes down like you're going to hit him. How many of those people can do the same way? They know they're getting beat. And they're no worse than going to church and getting beat up. <laughs> Amen. How many been to the church that got beat up on? I've been a lot of them got beat up on. Well, pastor... <laughs> I mean, I don't mind perhaps talking about sin and da-da-da-da, but you know, you got to have a lot of love in that too. Amen? you got more love than you have anything else. It goes on, and it talks about the masters also in heaven, neither is respecter of persons with him. He don't care who you are, but he cares about what you are. Amen? He don't care if you're the president. He don't care if you're a, 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 a plumber. He don't care if you're an electrician. He don't care if you're a garbage collector. He don't care what position you hold. He cares about who you are in him. Amen? And success is not always measured in the eyes of God as men do. But Paul says, finally, my brother, finally, Slave, free, whoever. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. How do you become strong in the Lord? Know the Word. Be ready. I had a call yesterday from a lady. She's been in this church a couple times. And she says that she's feeling really sick. And, and, and depressed 
and she and, and all sorts of illnesses. And my response to her was, let's pray. <laughs> my response was, oh, I really feel sorry for you, sister. I know God, you know, he'll, he'll help you through it. And, you know, we suffer for Christ and I, blah, blah, blah. How many, how many know I don't do that? I, I, I don't play that game. I go right to Heavenly Father. We pray in Jesus' name, not mine. My name ain't worth nothing. But your name is above every name. And your word is above every other word. And your word says by his stripes uh, we were healed. And I believe that healing power is here today. And move in the name of Jesus. Uh, rejoice. Rejoice. Again I say rejoice in the Lord. For he is our comforter. He's our healer. He's our salvation. In everything he is, we are in him. And I don't speak in my name, but I speak in his name. Amen. And worse than a pastor pacifying you. You know what I'm saying? Sympathizing with you. I feel your pain. <laughs> That'd be old, old, old Bill Clinton's favorite line. I feel your pain. <laughs> okay, whatever. Oh. But Paul said, put on the whole armor of God to protect yourselves. They may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Had a, had a, somebody asked me the question on my phone, where in the Bible, where, what commandment is, thou shalt not be a Democrat? <laughs> and I wrote back. Here's my answer to him. Give no place to the devil. I put LOL on there. How do we know someone's of the devil? Easy. He's doing the devil's work. You remember when the, they came up to Jesus? The, you know, the, the, the priests and the scribes and the religious people? And they said to Jesus, wait a second. Because Jesus was proclaiming the Father. His Father in heaven. And they said to him, well, our Father is Abraham. I mean, who, who, uh, uh, who what Father would you rather have? God the Father or Father Abraham? I know he had many sons. But Jesus was trying to relate, and they didn't, couldn't understand what he was saying. But our father is Abraham. We have lineage. We have the, uh, the rights uh, and the privileges of pronouncing who we are as Abraham's children. A lot of pride in there. And Jesus looked at him and said, your father's the devil. Because you do the work of the devil. You seek to kill me who is sent to you. And you seek to destroy me. <gasps> Us? Us? No. Jesus knew who they were. Because he knew their father by their works was the devil. And by the works of people, we know who their father is. Amen? I know voting is an act. Amen? Voting is an act. You have to go and fill out your ballot. Either, I guess, go to mail them in or go to the point and pay. You have to, in your mind, vote yes or no. Amen? That's everybody's right in America. Well, you're supposed to be everybody's right if you're legal in America to vote. You have to have a conscious choice. You better know what you're voting for. Amen? You better know what you're voting for. I Me, mean, it's easy. All taxes? No. <laughs> taxes go away? Yes. <laughs> easy for me. I look at who sponsors it. Because they, they tell you who sponsors it. If I see these evil people, and evil people uh, sponsoring this evil bill. I know it, 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 it's, a, it's not brain surgery. And anytime they have a thing say, it's for the children. It reminds me of 
important, here's a who. Every time they do that. You remember the kangaroo, the evil lady kangaroo? It's for the children! No, it wasn't. It's to maintain her power. And when they say, it's for the children, it, it is not for the children. It's to maintain their power. No. <laughs> Amen? I'm, I'm going to tell you something. This is Dan, not the Lord. But I sit on church boards who were interviewing pastors to take the church. Okay? And I interviewed a lot of pastors. Probably why I have such a low on them. But anyhow, any time a pastor used a death of a family member to be a pastor, it was automatically no. How many know that? Oh, I had twins and, and, and God took them. But I'm okay and I, I believe I can be a good pastor because I have sympathy for people who lost. No. I, I want a pastor who, who is victorious. Amen? Not looking back, but looking forward. I want to see a resume that says, The Lord, I have prayed about this position. And I feel being led of the Lord to write to you my qualifications to be able to pastor and shepherd this church. And the Lord has showed me what you need to be a healthy church. That's what I wanted to hear, right? That's what I wanted to hear. Out of almost 30 applications, none of them said that. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to the other board members of this church, but man, what is going on here? Come find out one guy, he had a street ministry for years, he said. And when I looked at his employment, he was a doorman at a hotel. Again, okay, that's a street ministry. Open up doors for people. But I do know one thing that God is looking for men and women who are led of his spirit. And not led of men. Or not led of desire. Or not led of womb. So, but can hear the word of the Lord. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. How many know this fight we're with right now for our country? This ain't a flesh and blood fight. They can burn buildings. They can ride all they want. But this ain't, a, this ain't a battle about flesh and blood. But against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And if any time this scripture is true, it is today. The problem with young people is they haven't lived long enough. Amen? He hadn't had a life experience to understand that. Uh, just like Pentecost, how many know Pentecost has a rise and then a fall? It has a rise and a fall. Amen? And churches have go up and they go down. They go up. It, you got to ride the waves. And we live in a time where we have a lot of young people out there in their 20s and some in their 30s who really don't understand what's going on here. They don't understand who the Weather Underground was. See, to know who the Weather Underground was, you got to be old. you got to be at least in your... you got to be at least 55 and older. The Weather Underground in the 70s bombed a lot of federal buildings, killed a lot of people. They had a manifesto. Most of them are still in prison. A lot of them escaped to other countries. Their manifesto stayed... The manifesto of the underground army, which was not just white, they were black and white. They were multiracial, multicolored, who did this. Their manifesto was left. If you read Black Lives Matter manifesto, exact word for word. Isn't that amazing? If you look at the Democratic Party platform, you can see through the whole platform what they believe. This manifesto is indoctrinated and planted in it. 